Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your May the 23rd Spiritual Principle Day in a Meditation. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. The title of the meditation for today, Maturity Helps Us Face Reality. Maturity comes to us when we use spiritual principles rather than defects to deal with reality. That comes from the Living Clean book, Chapter 3, Awakening to Our Spirituality. It took some pretty twisted survival skills to deny our act of addiction. Some of us coped by living a life of make-believe, such fantasy thinking, has a nasty habit of following us into recovery. It reemerges when we're unwilling to accept circumstances as they are or resist taking personal responsibility for our part of any problem. When we are clean and awake, resistance to the truth becomes painful. Through the process of working the steps, we learn how to deal with day-to-day -day reality in a much less agonizing way. Instead of reaching into that bag of dirty tricks that got us through our using days, we began to rely on spiritual principles to deal with life. Growing pains are inevitable when we uncover the contents of that old decrepit tool kit. Excuse me. Growing pains are inevitable when we uncover the contents of that old decrepit toolkit. Even before we learn to take our own inventory, a sponsor or close friend may plainly point out some of our less desirable behavior patterns in the moment. One member shared, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Appreciating the people who hold us accountable is a mark of our emerging emotional maturity. These are the friends who help us grow up in recovery. We learn that, or excuse me, we learn what makes us tick and what ticks us off. We come to know what defects call to us under which circumstances and what spiritual principles we can practice instead. We develop a moral compass as we incorporate spiritual principles in our daily lives. Instead of responding to an upset boss or partner with defensiveness or anger, for example, we take a moment to consider the alternatives. When we respond thoughtfully, inviting spiritual principles, not impulse, to guide our behavior, we begin to feel like we are meeting reality like mature human beings. We are growing up. Today, I will apply the spiritual opposites of my defects, recognizing the benefits that maturity offers. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. God, Grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. Very powerful, very powerful. Maturity helps us face reality. As I was noting in the Just for Today in a meditation, the importance when I'm doing a step 10, right? Um, making prompt amends. When I'm doing that, that I have someone I can run that by, preferably a sponsor, but it does not have to be. But it has to be someone that I spiritually trust. So this meditation is allowing us to go a step further. And I love the way that it summarizes it. Because we do need other individuals in our lives that are willing to be honest with us, that are willing to speak up when they see us acting out or doing something that is not really the positive side 
the spiritual opposite of our defects? Who do you know in your corner that is willing to do that? Or is everyone sort of like your yes ma'am or yes sir individual? They've gotten so exhausted with your behavior, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results that they no longer even speak up on it because it's wasted breath, it's wasted energy. Um, you're not receptive to anything that anyone has to say, or it's always some blowback whenever someone does suggest that maybe you change or deal with something a different way. Clearly they care enough because they're speaking up on it. And clearly they feel like there's some basis for making this suggestion because they've been in your life for however long they've been in your life. And they've seen the character defects act out. But because your responses have never been receptive, you can't answer that question that I just asked. You don't have anyone in your corner that actually will continue to speak up to you and highlight to you that maybe, just maybe, you might want to consider doing something different because your responses have always been so jacked up, right? That's an issue. We all need someone that we've given permission to be our eyes and ears in recovery. And a lot of times we don't have those individuals because everyone has become exhausted with our non-spiritual responses to anything they have to say. It's not that you can't develop those relationships again where people feel that you're approachable. Absolutely. But it starts with us becoming approachable. It starts with us becoming approachable. I'm always interested in the sponsee that tells me, I, I felt like you would be upset with me, so I didn't want to tell you. Or I didn't want to let you down. So I kept it to myself. I didn't tell you. Or I had to build up the courage to tell you. I'm always amazed at that individual that says that to me. Because in my own eyes, I felt I'm very approachable very open and very forgiving. However, that clearly is not the perception of everyone. I don't know necessarily how to make that change, right? Where people believe that they can, you know, share with me whatever it is, whether it's good or bad. But if the approach never takes place, if I'm never given the opportunity to demonstrate my empathy, who's at fault for that? Because there's a lot of people that approach me every day, that talk to me every day, about what they're going through. And sometimes my response is, what step is that? Sometimes my response is, what spiritual principle is that? Sometimes my response is, just rest. You're not gonna figure this situation out in a day. Give yourself some space to process this. This is trauma. You need to process this. So a lot of times I'm, I'm interested in why people do not have individuals in their lives 
that they can be honest with and that can be honest with them. I'm interested in what that is. I know to some degree it's toxic shame. And a lot of times the inability to, I believe, go to a sponsor about something is rooted in toxic shame and not really anything to do with the sponsor. That's what I've come up with. Especially when I see a pattern of uh, a repetitiveness of withholding information. I get to the point where I'm, de I'm not desensitized to it, but I already know the MO, right? I already know uh, this particular person operates this way. So I need to ask more questions. When they do say this, I need to ask this question because the, asking the right question is going to get me the right information and the right information will allow me to know the truth so that I can bring to them the spiritual principle that needs to be applied in that particular situation. And so now I have this this uh, around around the bush type of way of figuring out what's really going on when in actuality it would just be a lot less time consuming and energy depleting if that relationship was just more built on honesty. But it, it has to work both ways. It can't just be your sponsor playing a guessing game about what information you're sharing or withholding lying by omission is what we call it in recovery right can't just be your sponsor trying to figure it out like like I'm some doctor you know Sherlock Holmes rather right at some point in time there has to be the development of trust where the information is coming and we are maturing in the face of our own reality because we are taking responsibility for it and we are accepting it and we're willing to lay it out on the table so that it can be filleted. It can be dissected and analyzed and figured out so that our soul is no longer sick. Because isn't that what it's about? This 12-step program having a willingness to actually use the principles and the steps of this 12-step program so that we can rediscover ourselves and discover ourselves and become better. This is a deep topic. I don't have time to unpack it any further than I have, except to say that I also have people I also have people that I'm less likely to approach with the mess unless I believe that I also have at least some of my own solution, <laughs> right? It's hard to for me to admit that I don't have the answer. So a lot of times when I am, let's say, talking to an elder in my family, I'm generally thinking that they are going to be disciplinary in their response. Even as old as I am today, they're in their 70s, late 70s and 80s, right? I'm believing that there's going to be some parental type, you know, authority, authority shared with me about how I need to go about a situation. So I like to sound smarter than I actually am when I'm talking to them, <laughs> right? Even, even some of my friends in recovery, right? I like to sound a lot smarter than I actually am when I'm talking to them. I wanna at least bring a little bit of the solution, right? But they love me so much. They let me go through my little childishness. And then they still give me what I am asking for and what I need. And a lot of times out of love and regard for my sensitivity to rejection, right? 
my toxic shame that still tries to rear its ugly head because they are seeing that a mile away. A lot of times I will watch them incorporate what I think my solution is in their explanation of what they perceive the solution actually to be. And sometimes that looks like, you know, I'm really proud of you for, you know, being willing to draw a boundary and, you know, let so-and-so know that you're not going to tolerate that anymore, that that is highly disrespectful. It's abusive in nature, even though it's not physical abuse. I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud of you. However, what I just heard you say is that you still took the phone call. I would suggest maybe you block them. So you see that? Like they incorporated my solution in a way not to dismiss it, disregard it, and make me feel or sound somehow stupid or less than in thinking that just saying what I think I need to do is enough. But no, you need to also take the action. Okay? So I hope that's helpful because I want to make sure that we're on the same playing field, right? I want to level it and make sure that you understand my own personal experience in this area. We all need someone and you need to figure out who that someone is. And if the people that you think ought to be that person, your person, isn't is it you or is it them because if it's you like with myself in that example I gave if it's you then you can change that but if it's them beyond just saying that you're not comfortable with being honest you there's little that you can do about that. Then you need to figure out who you can be honest with. And if you can't be honest in general, then that is an inside job. That's not a find another sponsor job. That's not find another mate job, right? That's not that. It's an inside job. And that gets better with the spiritual application of these principles in all our affairs. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you today and I hope that you will have a beautiful day on purpose. I need to wake my boys up so we can get this exercise in. Have a beautiful day and I intend to talk to you tomorrow.